It said, the dreamers of the world dream because they are looking for paradise. Amon G. Carter Sr. found paradise in Fort Worth, a city he had built from the ideas and visions that consumed his every thought. He put his heart and soul into making Fort Worth great and zealously promoted the city to the world. But he wasn't just looking out for Fort Worth's present. He was looking to Fort Worth's future. And when he saw the city's future, he looked to the sky. It's not known exactly when Eamon Carter saw his first airplane, although it's thought it was during a 1909 trip to New York. But we do know it was a life-changing experience for him. Airplanes and Eamon were a perfect fit. The new mode of transportation was made for the most adventurous of spirits, and that fit Eamon Carter to a T. Carter brought the first planes to Fort Worth just months after seeing his first airplane. The International Aviators, a group of French flyers touring the U.S. in the first air show, came to Fort Worth at Carter's invitation. And Cal Rogers stopped in a North Fort Worth field during his 1911 premier cross-country airplane flight. Over 10,000 people were there to greet the aviator, but the first person in line to shake Rogers' hand was Eamon Carter. If seeing an airplane was a life-changing experience for Carter, his first airplane flight was a life-changing experience for an entire city. Carter's love of flying formed his vision of Fort Worth as an aviation center. His idea was for Fort Worth to become synonymous with aviation by bringing the industry's trailblazers to the city. The city became a training center for Canadian and U.S. Army aviators. Then in 1927, Charles A. Lindbergh, fresh from his historic transatlantic flight, came to Fort Worth at the request of Carter. The shy Lindbergh, in his brief speech to the thousands who had gathered to welcome him, encouraged the city to, and we quote, not forget aviation in relation to your city in the future. And Carter did not. Fort Worth soon became the third ranked airmail center in the nation, and Carter never missed an opportunity to tout the city's growing aviation industry, even to the commanders in chief. Carter got in on the ground floor of the aviation industry by investing in local companies, most of which were providing airmail and some passenger service. In 1928, Carter began probably his most famous partnership. He was elected a director of Aviation Corporation, which included ownership of American Airways. Carter, with friend C.R. Smith, later reorganized the commercial airline into American Airlines, becoming a member of American's board and its largest stockholder. To make sure those commercial planes got to Fort Worth, Carter began working to build the city's first airport, Fort Worth Municipal Airport, which later became Meacham Field, opened in 1925. The airport was expanded and improved to capacity in 1937, and it was considered one of the best in the country. With the city airport, the best in aviation touched down in Fort Worth thanks to Eamon Carter. Pioneers like Amelia Earhart and war heroes like Eddie Rickenbacker and Jimmy Doolittle all came here. Doolittle later returned as head of a government investigating committee looking at sites for the new Air Force Academy. To Carter's and Fort Worth's disappointment, the committee recommended the Academy locate at what was their next stop on the tour, Colorado Springs. With World War II looming and military aviation's growing importance, Carter helped put Fort Worth front and center in designing and building the best airplanes in the world. In 1940, the government was looking for a large factory site to build B-24s. Carter offered to donate land, and Fort Worth became the choice for an aircraft manufacturing plant, which became Consolidated Vault -E. In 1941, the U.S. government established Tarrant Field Aerodome in conjunction with the opening of Consolidated. The field later became Carswell Air Force Base. With the plant came another group of aviation pioneers, 
technicians and engineers skilled in designing the ultimate flying machines. Affectionately known by locals as the Bomber Plant, Consolidated began rolling B-24 Liberators off the assembly line in May 1942. When the war ended, more than 3,900 bombers had been built at the Fort Worth plant. It wasn't long before other companies, like Bell Aircraft Corporation, were heading to Fort Worth. Carter stepped in once again, aiding Lawrence Bell in locating the helicopter division here. With this addition, Fort Worth became a center of military and civilian aviation. After all Carter had done for Fort Worth's growing aviation industry, he saved one of his greatest contributions for last. With Meacham Airport at capacity and wanting to increase commercial airline traffic into Fort Worth, Carter envisioned this region as the location of the country's largest airport. A joint effort by Carter and the city of Fort Worth resulted in the Greater Fort Worth International Airport, Eamon Carter Field, also known as Great Southwest International Airport. It opened in April 1953. But unfortunately, the man who fought so hard to give Fort Worth its own international airport couldn't be there to cut the ribbon. The day the airport opened, Carter was at home, recovering from a heart attack. Almost two decades after his death, Carter's vision for an international airport was realized with the opening of the FW Airport, located just one mile north of the old Eamon Carter Field, and now the second busiest airport in the world. Also, some of the land Carter bought for his airport is now home to the corporate headquarters of American Airlines. And just as he envisioned, Fort Worth is a major aviation center with the who's who of the industry calling the city home. Fort Worth now claims three city airports. Meacham International recently renewed passenger service with Mesa Airlines. Spinks serves the general aviation industry. And Alliance Airport, the first master plan industrial airport in the country, is a magnet for economic development with companies like Intel and American Airlines. It's all part of Fort Worth's aviation present, but it once was Fort Worth's aviation future and the dream and vision of Eamon G. Carter, Sr.